Hello Freunde und Willkommen. My name is Nate and welcome back to another reaction video. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at a video that one of my viewers had mentioned in the comments of one of the previous videos that I released. And this one has to do with America compared, why other countries uh, treat their people so much better. Now, I believe this has a lot to do or mainly to do with labor, working conditions, pay, vacation time, sick time, that sort of thing, which is pretty ironic because just yesterday, once again, I was asked to come into work on my day off and I didn't do it. Unfortunately, I had an appointment or maybe fortunately I had an appointment, so I just couldn't come into work. But my wife and I were talking about it and if you compare the United States with, let's say, Germany, because that's what I know the best. That's where my wife is from. I told her that, you know, how many times do people get called into work in Germany? And I mentioned a comment for some, from one of my other viewers on another video that said that would never happen over there. They take their time off seriously. That is cherished. If you work a 40-hour work week, you aren't asked to come in on another day to, to cover because they can't get enough people. Now, the reason I don't know technically the, the logistics behind all that, do they have enough coverage already? Are they not worried about having no coverage for positions? Or is it just based in the culture that they know that they're not calling anybody in on their day off because that time off time is sacred? So I'm not sure of the, the actual answer. It could be a little of both. I'm not saying that never happens with any job. I'm sure there are times when it's an emergency or, you know, things happen, but I'm not 100% sure. However, here in the United States, it's common practice. It is common practice to be called in on your day off because they can't get the coverage. Now, that's not my fault. I'm sorry, but if the company I work for can't schedule properly, can't get enough people hired to cover all the shifts, that's not on me. I should not be punished, really, coming in on a day off to cover a shift. That's, that's not my problem. I do what I can to help out the team because I, I don't want to let anybody else down. I'm not obligated to do any of it. But I do want to help out. So I have gone in all my days off to help out the team. But that's that should never be the case. You should never have to go in on your day off because your company can't find somebody to cover a shift. So this video probably goes in the differences between here and I'm guessing Europe on the different labor strategies or the labor structure of companies. So let's stop talking for now and just jump right into the video. This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make more content like this, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. I'm going to say something that will probably offend many of my viewers. Let me preface this by saying that I, as an American, include myself in the following statement. I, as a United States citizen, I know all these videos keep saying in America, American, American, but let's not forget that the United States isn't America. It's in North America. There's also a South America and a Central America. So let's just get beyond that. We know what he's trying to say, the United States. Americans are quite possibly the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. We have access to the sum total of all human knowledge, yet our understanding of the world rarely extends beyond our own country. And even then, the majority of Americans believe in a vision of the country that does not actually exist. It's not that we're stupid, we just tend to blindly accept that the US is the greatest place on Earth, and therefore don't see any reason to educate ourselves about the realities of the rest of the world. In this episode, we're going to pull back the curtain on how America actually compares to other countries, and consider why the richest country on Earth fails to treat its people with dignity and fairness. 
I'm going to provide a list of important topics, then for each item we'll compare the American experience with that of citizens from other nations. Hopefully by providing a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll be able to see the stark contrast between how most Americans see their country and how it really stacks up against the competition. To give you an idea of just how skewed the American perception of our country really is, let's start with a pretty shocking example. Compensation for what are considered low-skilled jobs. We'll take the quintessential American company, McDonald's. McDonald's is the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue. It operates in over 100 countries and serves over 69 million customers every day. As of 2018, McDonald's was the second largest private employer, with 1.7 million employees, behind Walmart's 2.3 million. How many times have you heard someone refer to McDonald's jobs or workers in a derogatory manner? For some reason, people who work at McDonald's are seen as inferior or lazy or have any number of other unfair and unkind assessments leveled at them. This probably stems from the old notion of flipping burgers being a job anyone can perform. But the animosity towards low-wage workers has grown significantly in the past few decades. And in America, McDonald's workers really do suffer a low wage. As of 2020, the average crew member at McDonald's makes $9 per hour. The average McDonald's cashier makes $8 per hour. The federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25. $7.25. Federal minimum wage. Yet, I believe just this year alone, inflation increased 11%. $7.25. If you're single, living by yourself, you cannot live on $7.25 an hour. You can't live on $9 an hour. You can't. You cannot afford rent, utilities, a car payment, insurance, food. You can't. It is impossible a rate which has not been raised in over a decade and which should not be considered a reasonable wage for any position, considering the fact that a full-time minimum wage worker cannot afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment anywhere in the United States and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment in over 95% of U.S. counties. Now, the all-too-common response to data like this is something like, well, yeah, it's not a hard job. You should just find a better one. Here's a simple question. Should any job, regardless of technical skill required, pay workers so little that they cannot afford to rent even the smallest place to live, not to mention other necessities like utilities, food, and medicine? Absolutely not. That is inhumane and cruel, especially coming from the second largest employer in the richest country on the planet. Other notable objections include, McDonald's has to make a profit. If they pay their workers more, they might go out of business. First of all, if you can't pay your workers a fair wage, your company should not be in business. End of story. Bingo. But again, McDonald's is not struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, McDonald's raked in $21 billion in revenue. But no matter how obvious the exploitation of low-wage workers, Americans are hell-bent on praising the very companies doing the exploiting. Take this article on Reader's Digest, for example. It's titled, This is what McDonald's workers really get paid. You see that and think, oh, nice, finally some news showing how poorly these workers are compensated. Then you scroll down and, nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things like, the food chain is also great for paying their workers fairly, and McDonald's is one of the highest paying fast food chains in the United States. This level of sycophancy is insane. If eight or nine dollars an hour is some of the highest pay in the industry, that doesn't indicate that McDonald's is paying fairly, it indicates that a massive chunk of the population is being paid poverty wages. This is where taking an international perspective is so critical. If all you see is feel-good stories about how well McDonald's workers are paid, you'll never know how badly American workers are actually being treated. Let's take the same company, the same position, but in a different country. Here's a McDonald's in Denmark. The average McDonald's worker in Denmark, for doing the same low-skill job, makes $22 per hour. Well, I don't even make $22 an hour. And... This just... Uh, boy. I hope I get through this whole video. Well, hold on, you hear Reader's Digest scream from across the Atlantic. McDonald's workers in America get paid vacation days after just a year of work. Wow. Enticing. In Denmark, when you're hired at McDonald's, not only are you making nearly three times what you would make in an American Mickey D's, you also instantly have access to a full year of paid family leave and a pension. No slaving away for a year to prove your value to the company. You're hired and you're treated fairly. Simple as that. McDonald's can afford to compensate all their workers like this, but they won't. 
because U.S. laws allow them to exploit American workers to the point where they're basically slaves, earning the bare minimum to survive, paying all of their income and often going into debt just to pay rent, and having no way to escape this vicious cycle because they're working such long hours. This is the case across all of America's low-wage jobs, of which there are many. The plight of the low-wage worker is incredibly dire, and all you have to do to understand that is look at how those same workers are treated in other wealthy countries. Let's move on to another topic, work-life balance. Fair wages are definitely part of this equation. If you wages, it just blows my mind how I'm kind of going through that right now. And yes, I make more than the $9 an hour, but I'm not getting paid fairly for what I am responsible for. I'm not getting a fair wage based on the amount of um, time I've had in the company, the responsibilities that have been put on me above and beyond my original job title. I'm responsible for more than just being a team lead at the company that I work with, and I'm not getting paid fairly either. And the, the argument I hear is, I don't make any money the first half of the year, I'm scraping pennies, and it's the back half of the year where we make our profit. And granted, we make more money in the back half uh, after summer, so September, October, uh, because that's the holiday season. But there's no way you aren't making profit all year. Most CEOs I know would not be in the business if they weren't making a profit. If they were not making a profit, they would shut it down. So you can't tell me you're not making enough money to pay fairly for the positions that you have, knowing full well those positions that you put in place are vital to the success of the company. If our entire management team dropped off the face of the earth tomorrow, the company I work for would go down. I mean, it's just a simple fact. The CEO could not do it on his own. So I wish more and more employers would see that they aren't making money. They're in a position where other people are making the money for them. And if those people left, all of a sudden, just, you know what, we're done, see ya. Those CEOs will go broke. Well, I mean, if they're worth billions of dollars, it'll take a while to go broke, but you get my drift. They, they would go under. Their companies would not exist anymore. Yet it's a, it's a fact that we actually, we need those jobs because we have to survive. And the CEOs know that. They know that um, a lot of times the employee needs the employer more than the employer the employee so they're able to pay them below fair market value because what are they going to do go find another job that pays hopefully pays equal or above a lot of times will pay less um, are they able to just quit and leave live off savings no so these workers need that job and these CEOs and company owners know that so they're able to get away with this problem is that the United States doesn't, like you said, it's, it's legal to exploit employees. Whereas in Germany, the reason why Walmart does not exist in Germany is because the Germans said, you know what, you're going to pay your employees a fair, fair wage. They're going to get vacation time. They're going to get benefits. And Walmart tried to not do that saying, we aren't going to be able to make a profit if we don't pay them only nine bucks an hour or whatever it is. And the German government or labor people said, well, then you don't need to have a Walmart here because this is the way we do it. We don't care how you do it in the United States. This is how we do it. And if you're not going to make a profit or if you don't want to abide by our regulations, then goodbye. And so Walmart doesn't exist in Germany. Thank goodness. But that, that the minimum wage and the way that inflation is going right now, here in Phoenix, you're lucky to find a one-bedroom studio apartment for less than $2,000 a month. 
if you're making seven twenty five or even nine dollars, even ten dollars an hour, you can't live there. You, you absolutely cannot afford to live. And then they wonder why we have homeless. And then they wonder why people go broke and go bankrupt and can't get their bills paid and foreclose on things and have their cars taken away from them. It's just stupid. If you're paid fairly, you don't need to work a second job, which will free up your time to be spent elsewhere. But True. we're going to focus on other metrics, specifically the length of the work week, vacation time, and parental leave. Let's start with the US. Most Americans would say that 40 hours per week is full time. That seems to be the general consensus. But, in keeping with the country's exploitative labor practices, the hilariously named Fair Labor Standards Act does not actually define what qualifies as full time. That's left up to the employer. Okay, why does this matter? Well, think of your past part-time jobs. Did you get any benefits? Healthcare, 401k? Probably not. Most benefits, when they're offered at all, are reserved for full-time employees. Companies don't want to provide benefits because they affect their bottom line. America is all about cutting costs, and providing workers with fair compensation is a cost. So, imagine you apply for a full-time job at Best Buy. You're offered the job, but they tell you they only have part-time positions, but they can give you almost full-time. They make it sound like they're doing you a favor, offering you more hours than normal part-time. But this is just another example of employers exploiting their workers. If you work 37 hours per week, you're essentially a full-time employee, but they don't have to provide you any sort of benefits. No health care, no vacation, nothing. This is a common practice. Companies will hire people, but keep them just below the threshold for full-time to avoid providing fair compensation. I've seen it happen. I used to work at Best Buy and they would do it all the time. And that's just the companies who are still trying to appear generous. Others will simply not offer benefits at all, or set their full-time positions at 50 or 60 hours per week. Sales positions are notorious for this. They'll often say, well, we expect you to work 40 hours, but all the top sellers are working 60 to 70 hours per week. This is coercion. They're trying to pressure you into working more hours to benefit them, and the compensation is never what they claim it will be. By allowing employers to define full-time work, American workers are held captive by corporations, forced to either work absurd hours to qualify for full-time benefits, or find a second job to help cover the cost of things like health insurance. Both of these options lead to a terrible work-life balance, and as real wages have decreased and benefits have been offered less and less over the years, huge numbers of American workers have developed an unhealthy work-life balance. For example, in 1960, when workers had real bargaining power, only 20% of American women worked. Today, 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. Where does all this lead? As of 2020, over 85% of American men and 66% of women work more than 40 hours per week. We work 137 more hours per year than Japanese workers, 260 more than the British, and 499 more hours per year than the French. Why do other countries have such a better balance? Because many of them have laws that cap the length of the full-time work week. Companies are required to pay their workers fairly and allow enough time off for employees to maintain a healthy work-life balance. That's not the case in the US. Vacation time is a similar story. Whereas many other countries mandate that employers provide paid vacation and sick days, the US does not. In every industrialized nation, workers get more paid vacation days and holidays than in the US. Here's a depressing graph to illustrate just how poorly we treat our workers. France, 31. Spain, 34. Austria, 38. America, zero. Zero paid vacation days, zero paid holidays. And remember, these are the mandated figures. Every Austrian worker gets a minimum of 38 paid days off per year. Even in the worst possible employment situation, they'd still get 38 paid days off. In the US, many workers are lucky to get Christmas or Thanksgiving off at all. And the odds that it's a paid holiday? Next to zero. Let's move on to our final comparison. Okay, so I can tell you that uh, the company I work for is seven days a week. So uh, there are jobs out there, careers out there that are required year round. You know, you can't all work Monday through Friday. But we get uh, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Thanksgiving, and the 4th of July. Not paid. Those are holidays, but they're unpaid holidays. So if you happen to work on one of those days, you're not getting paid that day. 
then they give you the option of working an extra day during the week to make up that time. Otherwise, you're just eight hour or 10 hours short on your paycheck. Now, this last year, I was lucky. Those days didn't fall on a day that I worked. It was already a day I had off, so I didn't lose any money. But they're unpaid. And they're, we get paid time off, but it's accrued based on number of hours worked. So I used all of my paid vacation plus got unpaid days when we went back to Germany in June. I didn't have enough time off. We were only gone for two weeks. Now in any of these other countries, Austria for example, 38 paid days a year. I could have taken that two weeks and then taken another two weeks somewhere else and then taken another week and a half somewhere else. All paid. I wouldn't have to worry about it. But here... That's why nobody takes vacation because they just can't accrue enough to actually be able to enjoy their vacation. So, zero. The United States has zero federally mandated paid vacation or paid holidays. Even the poor, poorer countries, um, not Austria, Germany, not the powerhouses of Europe, but others offer paid vacation and paid holidays. That was one nice thing about the military. We got 30 days a year uh, vacation. If you didn't use 30 days within that time frame, you would lose them. So we were always, you know, making sure that, hey, I'm coming up on my year. I need to take some of my vacation days because they didn't roll over. Uh, that was the nice thing about the military. But you shouldn't have to join the military to get paid vacation days, better or free health care, um, get fed, get put up in a nice, nice place to live. That should be, it should be a choice for every citizen of this country. No matter what job they have, no matter how much they make, they should not be forced to work two jobs, three jobs just to make ends meet. They're never going to enjoy life. It's like that old thing where it's like I I work till I'm 67 to hopefully retire, to hopefully have 10 or 11 more years of my life, to hopefully enjoy it. That's what the United States is doing. They're making you work till you're almost 70 years old. Hopefully you have a pension that's enough that you can survive and you don't have to continue working beyond 70 years old. But many people still have to. They have to do something. And that you're not enjoying life where these other countries are mandating that. They are, it's implemented into the system where every year you're going to get a month off to go enjoy yourself. And I believe Germany, I think somebody else commented, commented on this, is that if you are on vacation and you come down with an illness and you go to the doctor and you have a doctor's note or whatever and you are sick for five days out of your, let's say, three-week vacation. You could take that to your employer and say, look, you know, I was on vacation, but I got sick for a week. Here's, here's the, the doctor's note or whatever. They give you those five days of vacation back because being sick is not being on vacation. They are completely separate. While here in the U.S., it's all one thing. It's all lumped together. Yeah, you can be sick. You can stay home, but you're taking your paid time off hours to cover that because if you don't you're not getting paid for those days so this, this just drives me crazy paid parental leave many americans aren't even aware this is a thing so let me explain when an employee of a company has a child sometimes they're offered parental leave a period of time where they can stay home from work to bond with and take care of their new baby this greatly benefits the employee, the child, and in the long run, the company, because the employee will be happier, less stressed, and more loyal to the company. Of course, offering paid parental leave doesn't benefit corporations in the short term. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the American business philosophy, it's short-term gains over all else. So it won't surprise you to learn that the US is the only industrialized nation on the planet that does not mandate some amount of paid parental leave. This may be shocking to my American viewers because being able to get paid to spend time with your newborn child sounds like an impossible dream in our dystopian labor market. And honestly, it probably is impossible in our current America. 
We're so invested in self-destructive capitalism that even suggesting the possibility of paid parental leave would put US politicians out of a job. That's not the case in the rest of the industrialized world. In fact, every other OECD nation, and even in many third world countries, new parents are guaranteed at least several weeks of leave. Let's take a look at a few of them. Ethiopia, a country with an annual gross national income of under $900 per person, offers 90 days of leave with 100% pay. Madagascar, 14 weeks at 100%. Afghanistan, 90 days. Denmark, 52 weeks. Norway, 56 weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first child, up to 26 weeks for your third, on top of 104 unpaid weeks. Lithuania, 52 weeks at 100%, plus an additional 52 weeks at 80%. Again, the United States does not mandate a single day of paid parental leave even for the mother, and the father is never considered. This means that workers in America have to choose to either pay the exorbitant cost of childcare, or have one parent quit their job in order to take care of the child. These are both bad options, which often lead to economic precarity. But that doesn't matter to the companies employing American workers. Profit is the only thing that matters. Hopefully seeing these labor practices compared like this has made it clear that not only is the US not living up to its claim to being the greatest nation on earth, but also that it consistently ranks poorly and often dead last in terms of labor metrics. Why is it that the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth can't pay their workers a fair wage, or provide health care, vacation time, or paid parental leave? You should realize by now that it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. Everything in America is beholden to the almighty dollar. Profit is the only motivator. If an action does not produce a greater profit, it will not be considered. Over the last few decades, Americans have watched as our livelihoods, our quality of life, and our dignity have all been stripped away by those who already make obscene amounts of money. Those in power say we're all in this together, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The ultra-wealthy and the world's largest corporations rely on Americans remaining ignorant. They rely on us accepting the lie that America is the greatest nation on earth, that it couldn't possibly get any better. All you have to do to shatter that lie is to take a look around the world. Other nations take care of their citizens. Even impoverished nations, or nations that we've bombed into oblivion, take better care of their people than the US does. American workers need to relearn the language of class struggle, and work together to break the wheel of the capitalist machine. If we want to claim that the United States is the greatest place on earth, we need to make it that way. Okay, so... I don't even know where to go with this because I've known a lot of this already. I've seen videos on this already. Um, and I, I still don't have any words um, besides just disgust. It comes down to greed. That's all it is. It just comes down to these CEOs, these politicians um, are, are greedy. They, they want profit and they don't care how they get it. It's modern day slavery. It's exactly what this is, is modern day slavery. You have workers in the United States are slaves to the system. And I don't see it changing anytime soon. Because even if you get the right people in power, you always have those that oppose it. And it's just... Another reason why I am so anxious to get the hell out of the United States and go to Germany. Germany's not perfect. It is not the um, plutopia, you know, that some people might make it out to be. They have their issues. Other countries have their issues. Every country has issues. But it doesn't seem like they have the issues that the United States does. It I think you can go there and you can live a happy, healthy, long life. Whereas here in the United States, you are working. That's all you're doing. You live to be able to work. And in other countries, you are working to be able to live. I would love the opportunity to work somewhere where I know that 30 days out of the year, I'm going to be told to stay home, go on vacation, go do something fun. They cherish that. You know, the these companies in other parts of the world, not the United States, they 
they tell you to take your vacations because they want you to be happy. Because if you're happy, you're a more productive worker. If you're not happy, you're unproductive. You're, you're not making the company as much money. I wish these people here would realize that. If you just gave them a fair wage, if you gave them paid days off, they would be more than happy to work for you, to continue to work for you. You wouldn't have the turnover rate. You wouldn't have these people coming in for three months or six months and realizing, you know what, you're not paying me anything. You don't value my time and my expertise, so I'm going to go somewhere else. And then they're spending money on training new people all the time. So they're losing money where they could be making more money if they just took care of the people they had, made them happy, told them that they were valued, gave them time off for having kids. I mean, for crying out loud, we have zero days in Ethiopia, 90 days of paid maternity leave and 52 weeks. And in another 52 weeks, 80% of your wage. So you could take two years off and still make 80% that second year. That is so vitally important to the upbringing of children. The United States are so disconnected. Their children are in uh, daycares, which good luck affording any of that, and not around the parents. The parents aren't raising them. These daycares are. And if we could have our kids at home and not worry about losing our job or being able to pay for things, the bond between parents and children would be so much stronger that those kids would be able to grow up uh, with the values of family and taking care of one another, where now it's, it's everybody for themselves. You know, the parents can't afford to take time off work. They can barely afford child care. So the kids are being raised by somebody else, basically, because you know damn well that when those kids come home and the parents come home, the parents are dog tired from working a 60 hour work week and they aren't going to spend the valuable time with their kids. So the United States is by far one of the worst places to live and work. I'm sorry. It's just it's fact. If you look at the numbers, if you look at the information and not base it on how you feel in here. It's fact. People used to want to come to the United States. It's the land of the opportunities of being able to do what you want and become who you want. And it's still true to a, to a, to a degree. There are some countries where you can't do that, at least not as well as here. It used to be. Now people are getting out of the United States. They're realizing, you know what? This isn't really what I thought it was. This isn't the greatest place to be. I can't just do whatever I want, become who I want, because I don't have any money to do it, for one thing. I get stepped on up by the people above me. Um, so they're leaving. They're going other places where there is an opportunity to do something better. And I want to leave, not in order to become somebody or do something I want that I don't feel like I can't do here. I want to get out so I'm happy. So I can live a happy life. So my wife and I can be together and not have to worry about getting called in on a day off or working 40 plus hours a week. I had over 42 hours last week. I had almost 50 hours a week before. I don't want that anymore. That is not that's sustainable. It's not sustainable. I'm going to give myself a heart attack. I'm going to not be happy, which in turn, the people around me won't be happy. So that's my reason for leaving. I want to be happy. And I know being in Germany, I am happy. Every time I'm over there, I'm happy. So thanks for the uh, recommendation. Um, it, it's rough. It really is. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your comments down below. Um, I'd like to hear your point of view. Tell me where you are in the world and what it's like for you. Um, and if you're a parent, what.
that is also like for you. Uh, because here in the United States, it's a disaster. It is a disgrace. Uh, no wonder people are dying younger or, you know, committing suicide because they just, it's, it's, it's sad. So let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. Please, if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified of any other new videos that I put up. I think I'm, I'm hopefully back on track. There's going to be a, a change to my schedule again. I'm trying to get a different position within the company, which will change my schedule, which may change the schedule of my videos. We'll see. But um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your positive thoughts, all your positive comments. It really does mean the world to me. And I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Until the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye.